everyone. I'm Tav with Find Me in a Book podcast, and I am here I'm with JR with Comedy Sandbox. JR with Comedy Sandbox. It's my channel. It's his, it is his channel. I am here watching a scary video and listening to scary things. JR and I both love Halloween. He is very much into the creepy, spooky, scary things, and I am very much into the little cutesy little ghost things, as you can see on my little nails. I am not prepared for this because I do not like being scared, but I am going to do it anyways because I very much love him. So I'm going to be watching The Thing in the Cellar, and I'm not happy about it. The Thing in the Cellar by David H. Keller It was a large cellar, entirely out of proportion to the house above it. For some hundreds of years, no one had crossed it to penetrate to the black reaches of the cellar behind it. At the top of the steps, separating the kitchen from the cellar, was a stout oaken door. This door was, in a way, as peculiar and out of relation to the rest of the house as the cellar, It was a strange kind of door to find in a modern house, and certainly a most unusual door to find at the inside of the house. Thick, stoutly built, dexterously rabbited together, with huge wrought iron hinges, and a lock that looked as though it came from Castle Despair. Separating a house from the outside world, such a door would be excusable. Swinging between kitchen and cellar, it seemed peculiarly inappropriate. From the earliest months of his life, Tommy Tucker seemed unhappy in the kitchen, In the front parlor, in the formal dining room, and especially on the second floor of the house, he acted like a normal, healthy child. But carry him to the kitchen. He at once began to cry. Okay, um, already when it involves children, it gets creepy. I don't know if you've been forced to watch scary movies like I have, but usually they have little children and they're really creepy, so I am not ready for this even more. When Tommy learned to creep, he lost no time in leaving the kitchen. No sooner was his mother's back turned than the little fellow crawled as fast as he could for the doorway opening I'm guessing into the creep the house, means crawl. the dining room, and the front parlor. Once away from the kitchen, he seemed happy. At least, he ceased to cry. On being returned to the kitchen, his howls so thoroughly convinced the neighbors that he had colic that more than one bowl of catnip and sage tea was brought to his assistance. It was not until the boy learned to talk that the Tuckers had any idea as to what made the boy cry so hard when he was in the kitchen. In other words, the baby had to suffer for many months till he obtained at least a little relief. And even when he told his parents what was the matter, they were absolutely unable to comprehend. This is not to be wondered at because they were both hardworking, rather simple-minded persons. What they finally learned from their little son was this, that if the cellar door was shut and securely fastened with the heavy iron lock, Tommy could at least eat a meal in peace If the door was simply closed and not locked, he shivered with fear but kept quiet. But if the door was open, if even the slightest streak of black showed that it was not tightly shut, then the little three-year-old would scream himself to the point of exhaustion. They tried in their own ways to break the child of his unusual habits. Failing to change him at all, they decided to ignore his peculiarities. That is, they ignored them till he became six years old and the time came for him to go to school. Finally, nothing would do but that the Tucker family call on the neighborhood physician. The matter is just this, Dr. Hawthorne, said Mr. Tucker in a somewhat embarrassed manner. Our little Tommy is old enough to start to school, but he behaves childish in regard to our cellar, and the missus and I thought you could tell us how to do about it. It must be his nerves. Ever since he was a baby, continued Mrs. Tucker, taking up the thread of conversation where her husband had paused. Tommy has had a great fear of the cellar. Even now, big boy that he is, he does not love me enough to fetch and carry for me through that door and down those steps. It is not natural for a child to act like he does. And what with the chinking, the cracks, with rags, and kissing... He's six years old. (laughs) He's a child. And there sat the doctor, very much at his ease, and the little six-year-old boy, very uneasy. Tommy... What is there in the cellar you were afraid of? I don't know. Have you ever seen it? Do you remember being scared of things like that as a kid? Uh, yes. I was very scared to go up and down the stairs when it was dark. Because I thought someone was coming. Honestly, I still get scared coming up the stairs when the light is out. And I rush up the stairs. (laughs) That fear will never go away. (laughs) I'm going to nail the door open, Tommy, so that you can not close it. 
as that was what the doctor said, Tommy. And you are to be a man and stay here in the kitchen alone for an hour, and we will leave the lamp burning. And then when you find there is not to be afraid of, you will be well and a real man, and not something for a man to be ashamed of being the father of. What do you think of this method of childcare? I think that he should get a new family. I don't think they deserve to be parents. That is not the way to, <laughs> to discipline your kids. Well, the hour is up. Suppose we go and get him and put him to bed. It has been a hard time for the little child, whispered the wife. Carrying the candle, the man walked ahead of the woman and the doctor, and at last opened the kitchen door. The room was dark. Lamp has gone out, said the man. I'll light it. Tommy! Tommy! called Mrs. Tucker. But the doctor ran to where a white form was stretched on the floor. Sharply, he called for more light. Trembling, he examined all that was left of little Tommy. Twitching, he looked into the open space, down into the cellar. At last, he looked at Tucker and Tucker's wife. Tommy! Tommy has been hurt! I guess he is dead! He stammered. The mother threw herself on the floor and picked up the torn, mutilated thing that had been only a little while ago, her little Tommy. The man took his hammer and drew out the nails and closed the door and locked it, and then drove in a long spike to reinforce the lock. Then he took hold of the doctor's shoulders and shook him. What killed him, doctor? What killed him? He shouted into Hawthorne's ear. You did. The doctor looked at him bravely in spite of the fear in his throat. How do I know, Tucker? He replied. How do I know? Didn't you tell me there was nothing there? Nothing down there? In the cellar? Well, that's just a case of bad parenting. In the rule book of Horror 101, don't go in the cellar or the basement or the attic or basement and cellar are the same thing i don't care people call it different things <laughs> just don't go there okay joe and rachel did really good i really liked it i like that she came into this as well if you want to watch the video without my reactions definitely click on the link below and if horror is not your thing definitely go to find me at a book podcast and listen to me about romance books